Gracious and eternal God and Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for this day. According to your word, John 3, 16, you said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We say thank you for sending your Son to die for us, that we might have a right to salvation. Father, we pray, God, that you would hear us today in our act of worship before you now. We pray, God, that you would go into the homes of those, God, that are watching the uh, whatever medium that they are. We pray, God, that you would speak to their hearts and their minds. We pray for our pastor, that God, that you would give him freedom of thought to bring the word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to Jesus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Mount Pisgah. Welcome, everybody else who is listening to us across the airwaves. We are just so blessed and, and pleased and happy to be back in the house of the Lord to worship for, with you um, after this holy week, remembering what Christ sacrificed for us, how he loves us, how he cares for us, how he loved us before we were even born. Hallelujah. We are just so, so happy to be celebrating, celebrating his resurrection. Hallelujah. He Hallelujah. rose up from the grave. He arose. And oh, are we glad. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just welcome him into your presence. We're here to praise and worship with you, to praise the name of Jesus, to praise all that he's done for us. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, just raise your hands and prepare to praise with us. Hallelujah. For all the things he's done for us, we praise him.
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Say hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. We praise you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We give you honor. We give you glory. We're so grateful today. We thank God for allowing us to be here. One more time. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Help me say it. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we praise your name.
come by my house and personally drop off some some stuff. He, as he was explaining, it's not a lot, but it's what I can spare. And so we sent that to our daughter. And I'm so grateful for him. Thank God for you. Uh, and um, in any case, they, they were uh, be, to be tested, and they did get tested. Uh, she and her staff in her office, and uh, they were supposed to actually hear Tuesday coming the results of the test. I think they got the test on Thursday of this week, of last week, Thursday of last week, and they were supposed to uh, hear the results of the test on Tuesday because they're off island. They don't have a laboratory on island. They have to ship everything off island to the, to the uh, continental United States. And so thank God we were waiting and waiting and waiting. And my daughter was feeling not too well. And she was coughing and was had some headaches. It was headachey. And, and uh, of course, you know, anxious about that because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But thank God, because last night, she, uh, yesterday afternoon, she called and she says, I just got a call and um, I'm negative. I don't have the Rona. <laughs> praise God. Don't have the, the coronavirus. And so, uh, praise God, we were rejoicing. I just want to thank all of you who were praying for my daughter uh, because I sent out an urgent request for prayer. And God has protected her children and praise the Lord. And we're so grateful for that. Now, for all of you who are listening to me and you've been quarantine because you have the virus and you, uh, you've been uh, in contact with someone who does, like most of us are quarantined, whether we uh, contact someone or not, we just don't know. And that's the thing about this virus, we can't see it, it's an invisible enemy. But we have a visible God who looks out for us. Someone sent a, a tape, uh, something on the on the uh, YouTube, that's, the song was all day, all night, all day, the angels keep watching over me. I haven't heard that for a long, long, long time. I grew up with that song, praise the Lord, but it really blessed me, praise God, to hear it again from a young man who said apparently he couldn't sleep and got up and sat down on the piano and just began to play, praise God. And I was surprised when I saw him to think that he would know, it, know that song, but he did, and I'm so grateful for that. God bless you real good and have a smile on you. Uh, <clears throat> Praise Jesus. And if you would just uh, allow me, please indulge me for just one more moment. Um, my daughter, Dr. Wilson, sent me a, a note and asked me if I would sing this song for her. So I'm assuming that she's watching right now. And I'm going to sing this song, just one verse and chorus, if you will. Hallelujah, glory. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that caught my liberty. I do not know why Jesus came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my, my deeds. I'm going to sing that again. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. It was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know why Jesus came to love me so.
bless you. How many can have that testimony to witness to that? That God looks beyond all of our faults and He sees our need. That's what we were expecting Him to do even more during this time of crisis and challenge. Praise God. Hallelujah. We need Him to look beyond our fault because as a preacher friend of mine said, we have not done right by God. We need to confess that, Lord God, we have not done right by you. You've been so good to us. You stuck with us through thick and thin, through the sunshine and the rain. God, we have not repaid the favor. And so we confess right now, we say we are sorry. We ask that you forgive. Hear from heaven. Forgive. Cleanse us, Lord. Heal our land. For your glory, your glory alone. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to <clears throat> move on now to the word of God as the Holy Spirit is giving it to me. I'm so grateful because the Lord has allowed us to be able to speak on the subject or the theme of it is now time for the church to shine. It is now time for the church to shine. And for the last uh, three or four weeks, I've been speaking on that theme. It is now time for the church to, to shine. And, and so I'm going to continue that uh, today with this, on the theme. It is now time for the church to shine. But our subject today is uh, time to shine in a new beginning. Time to shine in a new beginning. And a subsubject would be the, the beginning of a new beginning. The beginning of a new beginning. Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 33 uh, is a text that we have for us this morning. But today we celebrate Resurrection Day. Resurrection is defined as uh, the act of rising from the dead the rising of Christ after his death and burial, the rising of the dead on Judgment Day, the state of those risen from the dead, arising again as from decay, disuse, etc., uh, comma, revival. Praise the Lord. Those uh, definitions I found in dictionary.com, and I thought it was very apropos for, for what I uh, have to share with you today. And from the formal definition of, those, of that word, we can see a common link, which uh, can be defined simply as start over or begin again. That's the common link, start over or begin again. The common thread is a new beginning or the beginning of a new beginning. That's not just wordplay. That's a new beginning for or the new beginning. Hallelujah. Let me read it again. A new beginning for the beginning of a new beginning. Praise the Lord. I know that sounds a little confusing, but just stick with me and you'll understand. Having the understanding of what that definition is, therefore, uh, uh, of the meaning of re resurrection, it relates to Jesus. As it relates to Jesus, we're talking about Jesus because this is the day that he rose from the dead. We must joyfully then proclaim, he is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is alive. Jesus is alive indeed. His resurrection, the new beginning, his resurrection, the new beginning, means a resurrection, a new beginning for us. His resurrection, the resurrection, means a new res a resurrection or a new beginning for us. Amen? Now, we, we can continue as we worship the Lord and celebrate him, giving him all the praise that's due to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. So we give all the praise to Elohim, God the Magnificent, God the Omniscient, God the Omnipotent, God the um Omnipotent, all merciful, all gracious, all compassionate, all kind and all loving God. He is the only wise and only resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, hallelujah, he's risen. And he, praise God, we can, we can say right now that the writer, he is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and the morning star, the sweet rose of Sharon. He is altogether lovely. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. But most of all, hallelujah, he is my Savior and 
My all in all. Praise our God. Now I tell you, he is, I, I, I can just tell you right now how blessed it is to just know that. I can tell you why he is alive. Why he's alive. It is in him that we live, we move and have our being. That's why we are alive. There is none greater than he. What a wonderful Savior. He is a mighty deliverer. There is none like him. I tell you, there is none like him. Praise God. We praise him because he's alive. We celebrate this resurrected day. Now, in the text that the Lord has given us, um, he selected for our time together, you will notice that when I read that God has spoken and there is a word from the Lord for us today. Now, his word reveals in uh, our text... Uh, it tells us that Jesus has authority over life and death. Jesus has authority over life and death. Listen to the text. Verse 31. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. That's Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Verse 32 says, he spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned, verse 33 says, and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. That's from the NIV. Now, only Jesus, listen to me carefully, only Jesus knows the when, the where, the how, and the why of all that life uh, that pertains to life and death. <laughs> how powerful is that? How powerful is that? Amen. Listen, from the context of these three verses, Holy Spirit has ordained for us today. Listen, Jesus gave his disciples four details uh, that were specific to his mission of redemption. In the text, it says in verse 31, then Jesus began to teach them. I just want to pause for a second here. You need to understand what it means to be taught. It means that Jesus was imparting wisdom to them. He was imparting knowledge. He was sharing with them, praise God, letting them know what was going to happen. And as, as it is as many times, it's just like I'm standing here right now. I'm imparting a message to you. I'm giving you something that God said. Now, we're going to notice something as I go ahead in this message, praise God, that we are so much like they were at that time. Jesus began to teach them that he, the Son of Man, Jesus, must, he must suffer many things. That's, that's number one. He must suffer many things. Number two, he must be rejected. Number one, suffer many things. Number two, he must be rejected. Number three, he must be killed. Praise the Lord. Did you hear me? He must be killed. And after three days, number four says, he will rise again. So we got four specifics that Jesus was trying to impart to the people. To his disciples specifically. Praise the Lord. And I hope that you're receiving this. Now, I'm, I'm going to share two observations, just two observations from the last two specifics uh, from Jesus, and, and, they, and, this, and that's, and, and that's these, these two objectives. Number one is Jesus died, and number two, he rose again. All right? First observation, Jesus died. Now, I can almost hear the incredulous responses like, duh, we know that Jesus died. We know that Jesus died. Yes, Jesus did die. And the Holy Scriptures is replete with the minimal, many infallible, irrefutable proofs that he died. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord, somebody. Praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, for those of us who know and love Jesus, I need only to recount hallelujah to you uh, in your hearing, praise God, some of those infallible, some of those irrefutable truths, hallelujah, that he died. Listen to this. His heart, his heartache of betrayal at the Last Supper. Hallelujah. The anxious feeling of isolation and temptation in Gethsemane. The hopelessness of false arrest and injustice of an unjust trial. The mockery 
humiliation and shame before the blind and deceived. The agony of the seven last words from the cross. And in my opinion, hallelujah, the most desperate of his special experiences was the feeling of abandonment from his father. The pain of the spear in his side. The testimony of the soldier at the foot of the cross and his death, which ensures our redemption. I proclaim to you, praise God, that the theological truths that I just mentioned is irrefutable. We know that Jesus died. We know we've been celebrating, with, celebrating Passion Week. And it's all because of what we was leading up to, praise God, that happened on Friday. What is commonly known as Good Friday. Everything I just mentioned so, is so fresh in our minds. Praise our God. We know that he died. Thanks be to God, hallelujah. Holy Spirit has spoken a word of exhortation to us in addition to the theological truth that Jesus died. The good news is, hallelujah, he did not stay dead. I tell you, he did not stay dead. Praise the Lord. The good news is he did not stay dead, which leads to our second observation. A second observation, the scriptures teach us that after three days, Jesus will rise again. <laughs> Ooh, listen, as painful as that was, remember, if he had not died, there would be no resurrection. He had to die. Thank you, Jesus. He had to die for you. He had to die for me. Had he not died, we would not be celebrating the resurrection today. There will be no, no resurrection. There will be no beginning of a new beginning if Jesus had not died. From the Holy Scriptures in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 2, it says this. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or no forgiveness of sin. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23 says, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first fruit of, of a great harvest of all who have died. Just as death came, hallelujah, into the world through a man, Adam, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Resurrection had to take place. Listen, just as everyone dies, because we all belong to Adam, we all die. Adam sinned, and we all die because we belong to Adam if we don't belong to Christ. But everyone who belongs to Christ will be given a new life. I have a new life. I have a new life. Praise God. I trust you have a new life. God is so good to us. Praise God. Now listen, our text goes on to explain in verses 32 and 33 that when Jesus spoke openly about his impending death, one of his followers, Peter by name, took him aside and began to rebuke him. Now, praise our God. Pray, pay, pay close attention. Hallelujah. Peter heard what Jesus said in verse 31. Heard everything that he said. But then the scripture says he took him to the side and began to rebuke him. Verse 33 says, but after, hallelujah, he rebuked him. He looked, praise our God. And when he looked, looking around at his disciples, hallelujah, the Bible says he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are not setting your mind on mind on God's interest, but on man's. Peter, you're not thinking about what God's will is. You're thinking about what your desires are. Praise the Lord. Doesn't that sound vaguely familiar to most of us? Praise our God. God's will is not always forefront or foremost in our minds with our experiences. Hallelujah. Peter was rebuked for that. I believe that God has given us a mild rebuke to remind us, praise our God, that the most important thing in our lives is the will of God. Now listen, Jesus' followers, uh, not only just Peter, but Jesus' followers were not prepared, nor did they want to hear his declaration about death and life. Why? Because now you're walking with Jesus and you're seeing him raise the dead. You're seeing him turn water to wine. You're seeing him give blind, the blindfold sight. You're, you're seeing him praise our daughter. Uh, 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 
just speaking into people's lives and, and speaking wisdom and words of wisdom and speaking words of life. And he had power and authority over everything. Even in the, according to the, in the Gospel of John, when, when they came to arrest Jesus in the garden, the Bible says when he just spoke to them, they all fell back. We're talking about power. And most of us, let's face it, we really like power. That's why we, we, we love it. We love to have that power that we can rebuke devils and send devils on the run, praise God. And, and uh, the scripture says that that's what the disciples was so excited about. When they went out at the request of Jesus, they came back and said, Master, even the devils are subject to us. And Jesus brought them back down to earth. Get your minds off the things that are, that are on the earth. Do you realize that healing is only on the earth and it's only temporary? Even if a person is raised from the dead, it's only temporary. Lazarus was raised from the dead, it was temporary. The widow named son was raised from the dead, it was temporary. If you asked them and called for them now, they didn't know where to be found. Every one of us is going to die. Thank God. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus died so we don't have to die? Hallelujah. So Jesus' followers weren't ready to hear what he was saying. I, I, I suspect that there are a lot of us today who are not ready to hear what God is saying. Even with this crisis, even with this challenge that we're in now. No one want to believe that God is in control. No one want to believe that this is God's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. We're not ready for that. We're not prepared, hallelujah, to know that we are doing battle not against COVID-19, but against God. Hallelujah. God bless you. I need you to understand, my daughter is a medical doctor. I respect doctors to the highest. I respect the, the scientists and the lab technicians and, and, the, and, the, and the nurses and the, and the, the ambulance drivers and those who are delivering plasma from one hospital to another. Thank God for them. I pray that God would open the eyes and understanding of the scientists, that they would be able to see and, and come up with, a, and not, not necessarily a cure, but a, a way to prevent it with some type of vaccination that we could all take and, and that we won't have to worry about it. We're so accustomed to that, aren't we? Hallelujah. Thank God for Dr. Jonas Salk when, 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 when polio was killing us. God gave him a simple thing. Like, if I remember correctly, like the, the, uh, the bread, the, the uh, stale bread. Uh, penicillin came from the, the, uh, the stale bread. The mold, thank you very much, the mold on the bread. There's a simple reason out there somewhere. And thank God for the scientists because God is going to show one of the scientists. So I'm not against scientists, but I need us to understand. And we need to understand this without a shadow of doubt. And listen, I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to qualify this. You need to understand that when I'm speaking to you now, for the most part, I'm speaking to those who are Christians, those who are saved. Because the world cannot hear what God is saying. Jesus and this passage had nothing to do with people who were unbelievers. This were, these were believers. These were the disciples. These were the ones who were following him. And yet, when he spoke to them, they were not ready to receive, and they did not accept what he was saying, even though it meant life for them. So I need you to understand that. The world can't hear what God is saying. He's speaking to us. We hold the key. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sins and after all of that, heal their land. Our land needs healing. We have the key. This is the answer. We don't need to look anyplace else. We can come up with all kind of clever sermons. We can come up with all kind of clever messages. We can come up with all kind of clever music. But I'm telling you right now, Christ is the answer for our world today. So he, the followers weren't ready. Now the scripture, thank God, provides at least one reason why they didn't accept Jesus' word from the, re, from the reaction of Peter. We can see it. 
he presumptuously blasphemed as he spoke from his own mind without regard for Jesus' word or God's mind. That's why he could not receive. And I suspect that, that he was not the only one. He was just the only one who spoke. Hallelujah. Now listen, we give praise and honor to God because Jesus did not allow Peter to continue on that path of selfishness and deception. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad when you speak presumptuously, like, like as if you're speaking for God, that God won't leave you in that place of, deceptive, of deception and selfishness? That's all it was with Peter. He was selfish. He wasn't thinking about the, the will of God. He was thinking about, am I going to still be, be able to keep my status? And I, perhaps I'm being presumptuous for saying what he was thinking. But I've been alive and a, a human being for 70 years, and i got a pretty good idea of how human beings think. So I caution you against missing God's will, just like they did. Jesus rebuked him, then he spoke directly to Peter's source of deception. Isn't that wonderful? He rebuked Peter, but he spoke directly to the source of Peter's deception. Get behind me, Satan. Your mind is not set on the interests of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We need to understand and recognize that warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of the darkness of this, high, of this world and high places. God is able to see us through. I, heard, I, I hasten on. I, I, cross, I also caution us against missing God's will because of the deception of our minds by what we want instead of what God has for us. It is very likely that the disciples heard only what they perceived as bad or negative. Hallelujah. And missed Jesus' good news that he would rise again. Hallelujah. If Jesus said, I'm going to rise again, they missed it completely. Well, he did rise. That, my dear friends, was the beginning of a new beginning for my life and everyone who accepts his glorious message. I will rise again. He died, and I will rise again. Dear people, please be sure to know that Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim, is speaking to all who has an ear to hear what Jehovah, Sabaoth, Jehovah, Yahweh, Sabaoth. Those words are Hebrew terms that mean simply that Elohim is he's the all-powerful God, as I've already said, omnipotent. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Elohim. Yahweh Sabaoth. The God, hallelujah, of hosts. He's the one that's mighty in battle. Hallelujah. He won the victory for us. He got up from the grave. There was no grave that could hold his body down. We used to sing that song years ago when I was a young boy. There ain't no grave that could hold my body down. Hallelujah. If you have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He is alive. He is risen. He is alive. In him we have resurrected life. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. Jesus has risen, and it is the beginning of a new beginning. It is time for the church to shine in a new beginning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? Listen carefully. Hallelujah. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I feel his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always
It is now time to shine in new beginning. It is now time to shine in revelation and resurrection. Praise God. The beginning today is the beginning of a new beginning. A new beginning in your life, in my life, for the glory and honor of God. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you today for what you've done, for what you're doing, for what you're going to do. Bless us now, God, as we hallelujah, close our time together. You've been with us, and we give you the glory, we give you the thanks, and we give you the praise. Now, Father, we know that if you do not send conviction for sin, nobody will be saved. So I pray that you would bring conviction in the lives of those that need their heart change. Wherever they are right now, God, I pray, Lord God, that you would please Wake them up if it happens. It means it means in the middle of the night, early in the morning. Wake them up and make them think about where, oh, where will my soul spend eternity? Is he alive in me? If he's not alive in me, I know that I was going to spend eternity with Jesus. There's a resurrection to life and a resurrection to death. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would grant peace, Hallelujah, in the form of salvation to those who need it right now. As only you can. Oh God, I pray for the deceit, for the bereaved families, those of, who are suffering from dying and the death that's all around us. God, yet within us, hallelujah, it's a potential for death. Sin reigning in our mortal body brings death. But I pray for your mighty deliverance in the name of Jesus, for your honor, for your glory alone. Amen and amen. God bless you real good. And heaven smile on you. We're so grateful for all things. And we want to say thank you for those of you who uh, been so so kind and so generous in your, in your offering is uh, we receive your offerings via give a pie. Praise God. I want to just mention specifically one person sent him one thousand dollars. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a blessing that is. And I pray God's richest blessings upon them. Hallelujah. We need it, praise God, because not only do we have these uh, these uh, expenses, but we're looking at our new project as well. Thank God for that. And don't forget, every night at 6 p.m., there's prayer on our prayer line. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go to www.mountpiscaministry.org and you'll be able to join us in prayer if you would so desire. Bible study um, on, the, on the same line on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. We love you. We thank God for you. And we wish you all the best. And praise God. Hallelujah. That God can give you on this great resurrection day. Amen. And God bless you all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being with us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.